This is probably the most detailed video of the Apache D diving computer watch on all video platforms. Today, I am photographing the new diving computer watch Apache D released by North Edge. This design is an upgrade of the Apache family style. The appearance uses the iconic Apache pineapple pattern dial with mineral tempered glass. However, the internal structure of Apache D has been redesigned and the button battery has been changed to a rechargeable battery. Special note, because it is raining heavily today, there will be sounds of wind and thunder in the background music, which may affect the viewing experience. I apologize for this. The watch will be affixed with a screen protector before leaving the factory. Whether you keep it or tear it off after receiving it, it will not affect normal use. This time, the design uses a left to right three button arrangement. The three buttons on the right can be used to add and subtract data and flip through function options. The two buttons on the left are the backlight button on the top and the confirmation function button on the bottom. The middle one is where multiple sensors are located. The dial is made of alloy with a pineapple pattern and is paired with mineral tempered glass. Just above the back case are two contacts which are the charger interface locations. When charging the watch, please note that the two contacts of the charging base need to be aligned and attracted, like this. You can use the USB port of your mobile phone charger or the USB port of your computer. If it can be charged normally, the power icon at the bottom of the screen will always show loading. It usually takes two to three hours to complete the charging. Next, we will measure the various dimensions of the watch. First, the diameter of the watch, which is 49.90 millimeters on the vernier caliper. Turn the watch over and measure its thickness, which is 15.54 millimeters on the vernier caliper. Then we will measure the watch strap, which is a nylon strap, and its width is 23.59 millimeters. In general, this is a suitable size for men. I will use a steel ruler to measure the length of the entire watch for you. In the lower right corner of the video, you can see that the entire length is 260 millimeters. Of course, the strap is replaceable. As long as the width matches, you can buy a strap that is longer than 300 millimeters or a strap that is smaller than 260 millimeters. Next, let's set the time. First, click the button in the lower left corner to enter the function selection interface. The upper and lower buttons on the right can switch functions, and the middle button is for entering and the next step. Enter the set function, then enter the time and date interface. First, you need to set the time zone. After selecting, press the middle button on the right to confirm and proceed to the next step. In the hour and minute interface, press the two buttons on the right to adjust. The next step is to set the 12 hour and 24 hour display formats. Just choose the one you want. The next step is to set the date. The year, month, and day are all set in the same way as the time. By the way, you can choose to turn on or off the daylight saving time switch. Friends who need it can choose to turn it on. When all settings are completed, Click the button in the lower left corner to exit. In this way, the time and date are set successfully.
Alarm setting. Enter the set interface again. This time, switch the function to the alarm. Just like setting the time, set the alarm to the time you need. Then click the button in the lower left corner to exit, and the setting is completed. Unit format setting. You can switch the unit format, such as switching between Celsius and Fahrenheit, as well as the length and air pressure formats. After completing the settings, click the button in the lower left corner to exit. If you encounter some errors in the air pressure and altimeter values during use, you can enter the altimeter and barometer settings in the set mode to calibrate them. The upper right button is used to adjust the value, and the lower right button is used to jump to the next value. Enter the current standard value. Clicking the upper right button once will increase the value by one digit, and when you press and hold it, the value will jump continuously. If the calibration is completed on the current interface, you need to click the middle right button to confirm the next step. Before calibrating the altimeter, you also need to calibrate the weather to the correct parameters. In the altimeter calibration interface, you must pay attention to the positive and negative signs in front of the numbers. If the units are reversed, the resulting values will be very different. So please pay attention to this precaution. The numerical calibration operation method is the same as the barometer calibration operation method in the previous interface. The upper right button is used to increase the value and the lower right button is used to jump to the next digit. When the altimeter calibration is completed, you can click the button in the lower left corner to exit. Next is the most important function of this watch, diving mode calibration. You need to set the diving depth, SIT duration, and diving time. Depth setting here, you select the depth you want to reach and press the middle button on the right to confirm the next step.SIT also requires you to set a value yourself. I suggest setting a safe value within the implementation standard. Because it is a free diving mode, the best diving time setting is about 70% of your normal diving time. North Edge hopes that you can protect your safety while pursuing the limit. To set parameters such as height and weight, you need to enter the ped meter setting interface. First weight. The upper right button is for incrementing, the lower right button is for decrementing, and the middle right button is for confirming the next step. The same operation is done in the interface of height and stride length. Before testing this feature, you can see that there is a logging function here that records your steps and diving logs. We'll click on it to take a look, but there is currently no data in it. Let's take a look at yesterday's steps again. You just need to click the switch button in the upper right corner of this interface, and the data here will also display zero. This will display your previous exercise duration, calories burned, and exercise pace information.
Next, we will conduct a simulated diving test. Please wait a moment while I take out the pressurization machine and prepare for the work. As you can see, this is an Apache D dive watch in dive mode, and I'm gonna put it into this pressurized machine. I will adjust the dial to an upward angle so that it is easier for you to see. Next, we started the first pressurization to nearly two bar, simulating a free diving environment. At this moment, the watch screen has begun to display values, including the diving depth at the top, the diving time in the middle, the current time at the bottom left, the ambient temperature at the bottom right, and the battery level indicator at the bottom. Let's apply some pressure to two bar. Then release the pressure to simulate the rising of floating water. When you slowly ascend to the surface and the diving depth value on the watch reaches zero meters, the SIT mode will automatically turn on. The SIT icon cannot be seen from this angle. Wait a minute, I will adjust the direction of the pressurizing machine so that it is easier to see. You can see that there is a SIT icon flashing on the left side of the watch screen. The SIT mode will be turned off when you enter the water again. If you don't want to dive, you can exit the diving mode directly. Okay, we're doing our second dive simulation. Increase the pressure in the bottle to about 1.5 bar. You can see that the SIT mode has been exited and the diving depth measurement interface is now displayed. The depth is now 14.7 meters underwater. Then slowly release the pressure in the bottle to allow the internal and external pressures to reach a balance. When the depth returns to zero, the SIT mode starts to operate. This is the complete use of the diving mode of this watch. Of course, 
The diving record after diving is also very important. I first took the watch out of the pressurized machine to check the status of the watch after diving. There was no water vapor or water droplets on the dial. The function of the exit diving mode button was normal. The switch menu selection button was normal. And the diving log was entered to see if there was any record. Very good. All functions are normal. Two dive logs are recorded. The first dive was the deepest at 21.5 meters. I moved the machine away and zoomed in to see the specific log content. The diving log contains the maximum diving depth, diving time, and temperature records. If you want to see the diving time, you need to click the button in the lower right corner and there will be a diving time record. It is in seconds. I have omitted the demonstration of how to display it here. That's all about this watch. It's a great value for money and is an excellent dive computer watch under $100. If you want to learn more, visit my website, northagewatches.com. Thank you for watching. If you like it, please subscribe and like it. You can also leave your questions below and I will read and reply.